Hi folks, welcome back to Third World Garage and this new segment that I like to call Fun with Radiation. Okay, maybe radi maybe you shouldn't be playing with radiation, but it's still kind of fun nonetheless. So anyway, we've got an interesting little device here called the Air, Air Counter S. Now, the previous video I did was on a Soviet Geiger counter. This is not a Geiger counter. There's no Geiger Mueller tube in here. Therefore, it's not a Geiger counter. What it is, is it's actually got four transistors that I, I guess they kind of act like, like a CCD um, chip in that it, the radiation hits it, the particles hit it, it iodizes and it detects those little flashes of light as they're going through the CCD. So what it is, it has, it has this little cover here. You twist it slightly and out that pot and open it goes. Now it takes a single double A battery. And if you'll hold on a second, I thought I had one in here, but I guess I don't. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with a battery. And if you've watched any of my other videos, uh, one of the themes on my channel is IKEA products. This is an IKEA Alka Lisk battery. And we're gonna just use that, put it in. I promise you this is not a pregnancy test. This is an actual radio radiation detector. It's in millisieverts per hour. That's actually, the, it's interesting because it's the only device I have that's in sievert. Now sievert is the actual SI unit of measurement. So along with the meter and the kilogram and the liter, etc., etc., it, they're, they're actually all designed to work together mathematically so you can convert from one unit to the other um, if you have the right units. They're all a base 10 system. And it all makes logical sense. But everything else I have is older equipment, so it's in Renekin, named after, of course, Wilhelm Renekin, who was the father of the X-ray. But anyway, to turn this on, I'm going to hit the power switch, turn that on, and it's going to count down for about the next 30 seconds here. Now, while we're waiting for that, I'll show you another item here. And what's interesting, the reason I bring this one up is this comes from Ukraine and it was released uh, shortly after the Chernobyl incident. This actually came out after the Fukushima nuclear power plant incident. So the two, these devices both represent the two largest um, nuclear accidents in human history and civilian level devices that were designed to be sold to the general public after them. And there's for the, the cheap models, so to speak. The Soviet Union, yeah, not quite as fancy. Doesn't count anything. So we're saying that it's got 0.2 uh, millisievert per hour. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to compare it to. Let's see if we turn on the sound. Okay, sounds supposedly on. And now we got something that's really radioactive. You know what that is? It's a West Clock's Baby Ben Clock from about the middle 1950s. And what makes it interesting, it's got radium-226 as part of the phosphors that make the watch hands glow in the dark. In fact, if we turn the lights off, you might be able to see a faint glow. Well, I got the other lights on, so you can't. But anyway, let's put the, the sensor, which you put here, over top of what you're looking to scan. And And as you can see, it takes a little while because it's taking a sample over a certain period of time. I think it's like 10 seconds. It updates every 10 seconds. So it's kind of like the, the fuel economy gauge in a Toyota Prius. Don't ask me how I know. Um, it, it only updates every 10 seconds or something like that because it's increasing the sample size. Now, you can convert from Sievert to Rentgen fairly easily. They're not perfectly compatible, but I think it's I think the conversion factor is something like a 0 0.96 something. It's pretty close though. 
So the base we can do are 0.9. People usually do a one to one on, uh, well, 100 to one. One sievert equals about 100 Renkin. So 500 Renkin will kill you, five sievert will kill you. But it keeps going up and up and up. Now we can check the Soviet version. And this version is kind of strange. It had rechargeable batteries originally, but it, because Soviet. And it has an actual Geiger Mueller tube though. I think it's an SPM 10. We're gonna put this And that's basically all you get. And it tells you on the back that if it's less than 12 beeps per second, it's whatever that word is in Ukrainian or Russian. And then the math on, okay, if it's greater than 300, then you're in really bad. Okay, I can't do 300. I can't count to 300 in one second. I'm sorry, that's just a little bit optimistic. But I have modern non-rechargeable batteries in this. And to pull the battery out, you turn it off, open it, and there's the battery cells. And these are our L1560 cells, I think. And they are a lithium battery. But those are, I bought a whole pack of them from China. It was, but anyway. The weird thing about this one, though, is it does not have an actual speaker. It's just a high voltage transformer reacting. So, yeah, there's that. And then inside, it came with a charger for the original batteries. And, of course, it's a Russian or European power outlet. Yeah. But this is, it stopped sampling. So you'd have to reset it and go all the way from the beginning again to get another sample. A little bit of a pain in the rear end. But the weird, weirdest thing about the Air Counter S, at least this version, because there's two versions of this, one that came with this and one that didn't, is the instruction manual. It's a comic book. And being Japanese, I believe you read it back to front. It shows Fukushima. So obviously that's what it's talking about number of other Japanese cities. Unfortunately, I do not read Japanese, so I couldn't tell you what it is and how to test things and things that you can't test. And just overall, a very unusual thing for a radiation detection device, but the Japanese do have their thing for cute. And it definitely shows through in this. And this guy, I believe he's the head of the corporation. It's like this appliance company that uh, manufactured this for the people of Japan after the Fukushima disaster. Um, you can still find them on eBay. I happened to get this one at a really good deal. I paid like 27 bucks for it when there was like an oversupply, but now there's not so much supply and they've gone back up to like $65. So not quite as good. If you want an actual Geiger counter, I'll show you one that's better than this, better than this. Not as weird as this, though. It does not have a comic book. And that's this one right here. They're about $75 to $80 surplus. It's a Rat Alert 50. It is alpha sensitive. And this is made by International Medcom. Now, this, of course, it has about a 10 second sampling time, too, because you also have to work, wait for the. This is a vacuum tube. You gotta wait for the tube to warm up. But it is sensitive to alpha, beta, and gamma, whereas these two are really only sensitive to. Gamma and maybe some hard betas. But you see that uh, 0 0.004 millirenkin per hour is our background. And according to the Air Counter S, 0 0.06 uh, millisievert per hour. I don't know if I've said that correctly, milli or micro, but um, is our background radiation. Oh, it keeps going up a little bit. But eh, pretty close in numbers. 
And actually that's much higher than normally. This is normally 0 0.005 milli Rankin per hour in my house. But it's probably picking up some of the stuff that's in this room because this is where I keep my samples. Anyways, if you're looking for just kind of a neat no radioactive novelty, try to find one of these with the original comic book. They don't always come that way. And it actually comes um, shrink wrapped to the back. And here's the back picture with mother, child, and running away from, from the puddle full of radioactive water. Go Japan. Anyway, this has been a, another episode of Fun with Radiation here on Third World Garage. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Thank you.